our little description of our project, um, we chose orthi orthotics and prosthetics, and with this project, we aim to not only enlighten you about the past, from the iron toe to what we have now, um, bionic legs, um, we plan to look into the history of it. We take you back all the way to Roman generals who, who had a, a fake limb that was deemed as embarrassing, to all the way until now to where you can have runners in the Olympics with prosthetic limbs. Um, we're also going to go over the advancement and enhancements of prosthetics and orthotics, such as different braces for um, different type of limbs, such as the knees, if you tore your ACL or tore your MCL, um, different braces that help with that recovery, um, physical rehab. Also going to the innovation of prosthetic limbs and how now they're trying to attach it to the actual bone. So we're going to go through a lot of those things. We're going to go through the robotics and the engineering of the actual product, how they correlate these things with um, different types of engineering, how we have biomedical interacting with electrical for adaptive neural systems, going into mechanical for the actual titanium of the product, if it's steel, um, and, and so, so forth and such like that. We're also going to incorporate it to the military projects. Um, I know that Amar, we have, he has a DARPA. We have a lot of military veterans that use these products um, and how it will work. work. Basically, seeing how it will work now, we'll see how we can have future advancements from what they come up with now, because there's many ways you can enhance prosthetics or orthotics, and we'll and mention one of those as we go along. Okay, so the motivation behind this project, um, I know for myself that I am more interested in this field uh, based on how it can innovate so many people. You have many people that have neck fractures, they have back um, spinal injuries, they have knee, knee injuries, they have ankle injuries, elbow, wrist, um, and so on and so forth. So it attaches to many different people. And then also to give them that motivation that they are not limited to how they were before, even those that have lost limbs through the catastrophic events. We can also give them a, a new way of living, even with a fake limb. The idea of prosthetics has been around since the dawn of American thoughts. Ancients, like the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans, have been found to have uh, document, there was documents of them having artificial uh, uh, and prosthetic uh, limbs. Uh, even in uh, even some ancient literature, stories and poems, they were mentioned about how the, uh, some people went into battle and lost their limbs and they were replaced. For example, there's a story about uh, Marcus, Marcus Xerxes, and he was a Roman emperor. He was uh, one of the leading, leading soldiers for the Roman army. Uh, one of the battles, he lost his right hand and uh, he had it replaced with an iron uh, uh, prosthetic limb so he can carry his right sh his shield and go back into battle. Also in the, in uh, 2000, uh, in, in the year 2000, uh, researchers found in, uh, in Ka uh, researchers in Cairo, Egypt, found evidence of uh, prosthetic limbs when they undug an, an, uh, a mummy from the ground and it was b believed to be documented the oldest artificial limb found till today. Uh, basically, it was a leather and wood uh, toe that was found on a, a mummy of a noble uh, pharaoh lady. And, uh, and I personally believe that that's one of the main issues that can prove that artificial limbs has not been evolving really fast, with exception to the past, uh, to the past few years. Okay, a few current practices. So there's special footwear, there's special braces, and special artificial limbs based on the person's needs and wants. Um, we have now where traditional meets technology, such as computer-aided design, as we all do as engineers. Um, we have um, manufacturing, we have tracer that's equipped with cargo on the premises. We also have different things such as um, microprocessing technology, such as the C-Leg, the RHEO, um, many of those things that help with these um, prosthetic limbs and whatnot. We also have myoelectric technology. And that's where we will also incorporate the eye knife, as you guys will see a little bit later on. Um, we have little, other things such as lymphatic and NPS socket um, treatments, all helping with the fabrication of prosthetic limbs. Um, and a little bit more for that, we have a uh, human like rotation. You can actually rotate these devices before dishing them out for, for sale. Um, along with that, we, we have, they have carbon fiber blades in which the sprinter, I don't know if you've all, all seen it in the past Olympics, in which he used himself. 
um, and which I watched and was very intriguing, was another breakthrough for me to become in this field. Uh, now for new designs. <clears throat> Having this use of traditional meeting technology, we have also opportunities for new ways to approach these designs. Um, there are skeletal attachments of artificial limbs, such as going into the, using the prosthetic limb into the, the muscle, I mean the, into the bone, instead of just trying to attach it to the, fake, the, the lost limb itself. Um, we have a develop of a surgical technique for anchoring artificial teeth into the jaw. And that's how you have some people that, have, that don't have teeth or they have, um, what do you call that? Uh, like uh, plastic, plastic. Yeah, plastic, plastic, you know, they take out the dentures. Yeah. Now we have a new way for them to actually have teeth that can be considered theirs. Um, some advantages is patients are quickly developing control over the limbs that they didn't have. And some people, may, maybe because of birth defects, some because of catastrophic events, um, some because of, you know, accidents or, so, or so, something. They actually have control over these limbs. Well, back then they didn't. Um, like I said, back then they had um, steel arms and such and such, in which the weight of it was too much, too heavy for them to control. Um, the disadvantages is this: it, it requires two two surgeries to attach the titanium to the bone. So you never know how that will work if it will deteriorate. The titanium is a little bit too strong for the bone. Um, this can swell with heat or weight gain. So as you gain weight, or you put too much weight on this limb, you can start to swell and start to damage other other arteries or tissues around that around that muscle and bone. Another disadvantage is it's not fit for the elderly. People that are not are too fragile with their limbs, you know, there's a hard time for them to make this transition to a fake limb because it is titanium. Actually, Leandra, for, for this product, because uh, when you look at it, you see, it seems like the disadvantage overcome the advantages, right? But what they're trying to do here is they're trying to uh, involve silicone element right. into the titanium, so uh, it doesn't get affected as much with the heat, and it can withstand like overweight and all that. But they still have a big problem with the elderly because they, when they uh, have like, uh, I think diabetes was an issue, right. blood pressure and all that. But they say within the next ten years, this could be a major thing. Yeah. Okay, so this actually was one of my favorite parts about this project: the eye knife. This was extraordinary. I've never heard about this thing. I've just known about it. And it was developed by Dr. Zora. He's a very, very uh, intelligent doctor, which thought that actually uh, taking a part out of a tissue of the body and uh, using the eye knife, to, uh, which works with a laser, and then it uh, the, like, dissects the tissue. Instead of uh, sucking out the, the fumes that come out of the tissue when you do that, he actually incorporated the fumes into uh, uh, a machine, a device that he operated, and uh, that that device can detect uh, whether the, the patient has cancer. It can also detect what tissue the, uh, the, this uh, this tissue, what part of the body is it from? Is it from the brain? Is it from the back? Is it where is it from? You can know. Uh, they had a uh, a lot of tests. They had like 91 patients, and they all proved successful. The machine detected the the tissue and the disease every single time, and uh, the only disadvantage that they had with this. Believe it or not, is that the surgeons did not know how to use it yet. So they were not, uh, they didn't know how to use the technology yet. So within a few years, with them getting the proper training on it, this could be a big thing. Uh, the, the Defense Advancement Research Project Agency, which is the modular, uh, the modular uh, prosthetic limb. This was a pretty complex issue, and they're they're not there yet, but they're doing pr some pretty good research, and uh, I think they have a prototype of it, but they haven't installed it on any human beings or nothing yet. But the, basically, the main issue about this, the main purpose of this thing is to replace exactly replace a human arm. So if you're a war veteran, if you uh, if you lost your arm in a war, and you come back. They can replace your arm with this thing. This thing can curl up to 45 uh, pounds, and it works like exact muscle. So, uh, as you see over there, that's the shoulder. It has like an, uh, on the top over there. It has a motor by itself. Every single part of the body has a motor. The the wrist has a motor. The thumb has a motor. The fingers move singularly like a human arm. And we have a short video here that you can look at it and see before you saw. You can just hold click on the video. The window. Um, one of our new proposed um, conceptual designs, I was thinking of using a brace. Imagine that you tear your ACL, tear your MCL, tear your meniscus all in one. 
and you only have the option to go to physical therapy once a week. You can't go three times a week. I'm proposing a design where on the other two times of the week that you cannot go to therapy, there will be a brace that you can use that's motorized based on you and your needs. So there will be the software developed to correlate with the brace. And from there, it'll be charged through battery just as we do our cell phones or whatever else and last for a, a, a certain amount of time based on the voltage in and voltage out. So from there, the physician would, the, the software itself would take you through, okay, torn ACL, rehab treatment for this is this. So let's say, for instance, you have to do knee flexion. Every time that you cannot go to your physical therapist at a certain time of the day, you have to do those exercises based on the brace. The brace would allow you, it'll be motorized for you to do those movements by itself. Now, there are braces that help you with movement, but there's none that is motorized to help you do it when the physical therapist is not present. So that's one of our new designs that we're trying to do, um, and here are the steps that places to do so. Let's do anything else. And once you get the prototype, after you test it, after you test the software and the compatibility, all should go well from there. Um, and pretty much the end of this project, from the start of this project, we aim to enlighten you all about the history and the future, as well as the present of prosthetics and orthotics. As we don't see it because we have all four working limbs, we may see it in sports and athletics. I myself have seen it through a knee brace. So it's the simple things from you know falling on the stairs, I mean, maybe hurting your arm, or you seeing someone that has a missing limb, and you take a second look at them because they don't have that limb. However, we want to eliminate that. We want that person to feel as if they are just as normal as us. If they don't have a limb, they can feel like they actually have that use of that limb. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. No. Uh, I know I pretty much destroyed the first part.